I see West Ham quite a lot for obvious reasons. This is a really profound what I'm going to say. Oh, okay. They're actually quite crap. <laughs> Very think- profound. Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Yahoo Footballing Weekly with me, Yahoo columnist Neil Humphreys. And Yahoo editor Chia Han Kyung. And we have another mini episode for you. A special. Special. A special. I know now, now, mini, now we are in the midst of uh, international games, so no club games. Yeah. But club games are coming up and we are almost reaching the final stretch mm. of the EPL. So I think it will be a good time maybe for us to look back a bit and yep. then before we look forward. Okay. Yeah. So, so we're gonna, go on, you do it. So yeah, yeah. So let's start with... Uh, what is your pick for the match that defined this season? Yeah. So and we far. also, before we even start, I want yeah. you to send us yours oh, as well. Yes. So we're going to go through a list of categories. He'll give his, I'll give mine, and you give yours at Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube, Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter, and Yahoo SEA on TikTok. Brilliant. All Brilliant. right, first one, the match that defines the season. Mm. I got a feeling we might have the same I, one. I also think mine is the All same. Right. One. You want to go first? Okay. It's uh, Arsenal beating Manchester United 3-2. Oh, that's a good one. I, good I one. haven't got that. I haven't <laughs> got that. I haven't got it. Go on. Uh, yeah, yeah. So 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 that, that was a match, you know. I you know Arsenal are now the still the league leaders and then they've they've been through all, all throughout the season they've been saying, ah, they'll probably drop points, they'll probably lose out. Manchester City gotta come back and take over them and then and then they 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 against Manchester United who are fast improving improving very fast under the manager and then uh they, well we all, all thought it was, was a good and it was a good game mm. uh they Man U took the lead to Rashford Arsenal equalized equalized to Nketiah they mm. went ahead through a great goal by Bukayo Saka but Lisandro Martinez uh, equalized with a header in again and then we thought well this this is it they're gonna drop points again. Uh, Arsenal but they came back and they scored a 90th minute winner by Nketiah hmm. and I know it was a really really thrilling match right? there, were, there were opportunities everywhere but it really cements Arsenal as you know you don't you don't look at them as like ah they they they'll drop off at the mm. end they are fast starters but they they are they were they are title contenders from then onwards good shout mm-hmm. good shout but i would argue mm-hmm. that defines Arsenal season. True. You true. can disagree. True. You gave me the category and you said the match that defines the okay. actual season. So, so for that reason, I thought you'd be happy with this. Oh, yeah. you, you probably I, give that one. I've gone with Liverpool yeah. <laughs> beating Manchester United 7-0. Yeah. That match encapsulates the bonkers, insane, <laughs> baffling, makes no sense, unpredictable season like any other. Nothing Fair about enough. this season has been predictable. Oh, yeah. Oh, As yeah. we sit here, we still don't, have a clue who's going to get relegated. We don't have a clue who's going to finish in the top four and we don't have a clue who's going to win the title. Right. And we sure as sh- didn't know <laughs> that they were going to win 7-0, seven nil, nil. right? Yep. Now, I just looked at the stats. Before they went into that game, it, the perception was Mane's gone, Firmino's over the hill, Salah's lost form, Liverpool can't score. They score seven <laughs> from eight shots. Ridiculous, right? <laughs> then we say the front three... Are hopeless. They're not gelling. Gakpo, yep. uh, Nunes, they have the game of the season. It's called, yep, two goals each. <laughs> two goals each, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Then we say Van Dijk is washed up. He's not the player he was. One of his best games of the season. Yep. Solid, clean sheet. Mm-hmm. On the flip side, Manchester United, it's all about Casemiro. <laughs> Casemiro is the linchpin of Manchester United. Hopeless. Worst game he's had for <laughs> Manchester United. Terrible. Ten Hag. Signing of the season. Brilliant. Tactically out for by Klopp yep. lost the game on the flanks gave Robertson and Alexander no. correct yep. far too much space mm-hmm. and by the time he tried to fix it too late. it was too late everything was upside down yep. it was a Alice in Wonderland looking through the looking glass upside down topsy-turvy game for a topsy-turvy season nothing made sense Yep, nothing added up <laughs> and then if you want the cherry on the cake following week Liverpool, Liverpool beat lost. by the bottom team ah. in the table. Those two games collectively define this crazy madcap season. Madness. 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 I have no idea where this season's going from week to week, which game, who's going to win, who's going to lose. Fabulous. Let yeah. us know what you think. Yeah. Right, what's the next one? Well, next one will be the player that defines this season. What okay. about yours? You start I'll go first. first. We might have the same one again. Oh, yeah. I think we might. The player that defines the season for me so far, Bukayo Saka. Oh. Do you have him? No. Okay. I know at the start of the season, I probably said either Haaland might. I know I said 
Sun Hong Ming. I was hoping Sun Hong Ming would be one of the keys. Mm -hmm. But for me, he's been arguably the best player of the season, certainly the toughest, certainly the most consistent. I mean, this is his, as we record this, this is Saka's 36th start of the season. Not just appearance, but start, if you include his games for England. Mm. Arteta said, I want him to be my 70 games a season man. I know he was half joking, but he was saying 70 games a season, a game every three days. I mean, that's not plausible or realistic, but I get the sentiment. He's important. He has become their automator and he has come to symbolise what Arsenal are. He has been relentless in the way that the season has been relentless. True, true. EPL, World Cup, EPL. Saka has defined that like nobody else. He has not stopped. He's been extraordinary. And uh, Yeah, I think that that's a great choice. Um, I was thinking of all the Arsenal. I was thinking of Saka um, as, as my choice as well, but I can't, I can't pick him over the other... Arsenal players who have done such yeah, brilliantly over yeah. the season. Martin Odegaard, great, great, great playmaker. And then you got to think of Gabriel Martinelli, William Saliba, even Granit Xhaka yeah. has been a, like a like a revelation this season. Thomas Partey, Trussard has come in yeah. and done well. It is truly Arsenal are truly such a such a team. It's a team ethic. It's a I agree. team effort. So I I I don't know Saka. I find him while well, he's brilliant. I don't think find him. That influential as a, as six two. goals and three assists in eleven games since the World Cup. He alone, not well, he alone, well, well. but he is a key reason why they're yeah, top of the table. But some of the games, he flitters in and out. But fair enough. I think I think it's still a great choice. Thank you. Um, that's which is why I thought uh, that's, I, I, it's that, such a great choice. You didn't pick it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still think Erling Haaland. Everything he yeah, does yeah. is being. Um, influential, even even those, even though he, the is is so crucial to how City will will fare, um, this whole season. You know, I, you know, the, at the start he was like j just unstoppable. He's mm. just scoring hat tricks, you know, breaking all sorts of scoring records. We just thought this is a robot. This this cannot be. This yeah, cannot yeah. be human. And and actually, after that, through the season, you find that he's actually human. Is is you know he he needs still needs people, the teammates to help him find the way to go through, and then the teammates are up and down. And Sometimes he's missed chances missed, as well. He missed chances yeah. against top teams. He against, for example, against Liverpool, he can be effectively um, uh, martial, but you can't take your eyes off him this no, season. I, no, I agree with yeah. you. I yes, agree with and you. So, so I think. Um, uh, after after debating myself <laughs> for a while, I thought uh, I still have to go with Harlan. And honestly, you're yeah. probably right. Yeah. I mean, if you're talking about the player of the season, the player that we will remember 10 years from now, it is probably going to be Harland. Yeah. That I will give you, yeah. but it's still sucker. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we, we've talked about Harlan on uh, our previous episode. You can find it. Uh, yes. Uh, and right sucker as well. We yeah, love sucker. Yeah. But let us know what you think. Send in all your comments about your player that defines the season. All right, moving on. Yep. The manager I that think, defines I think we also might have the, the season. One. Well, we haven't had the same one so far. All <laughs> I'll right, say wrong. you go first. Eric Ten Hag. Yes, yes, correct. Yes, finally we got one. We agree on that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, wow. I mean, at the start of the season, we thought, oh, oh yeah, uh, he, when he was when when he was signed by Man U, we thought, okay, this this might be a good, good signing. And then at the start of the season, they lost 4-0 to Brentford. They did badly against Brighton. And then we thought, ah, Eric Ten Hag is overrated or whatever. Within the start of the season until right now, Manchester United looked like a different team. I agree. Completely different team. Shot up the, 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 the standings. Now, now, well, uh, the past few weeks a bit a bit dodgy, but no, they were they were almost in contention to fight with the Arsenal and Manchester United, yep. and you no, know, the way he handled any kind of situation is just you're absolutely right. That's what a manager should do. Mm. Okay, well, a Cristiano Ronaldo situation handle it perfectly, mm. uh, you, and then force force the Ronaldo to leave. Marcus Rashford, not only did he rehabilitate him, mm. he even even. The moment he stepped out of ground, he, he immediately he said, "Well, he has to be fine." He was dropped from the starting lineup, so yeah. So I think he he is transformed the Red Devils uh, as much as uh, within this short this period 
as mm. possible as he possibly can. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm. Not only that, I think to a certain extent he's transformed the league oh, yeah. because of Manchester United's position within it. You know, we're talking about a manager that, as you said, the manager that defines the league. Mm. And if you look at the Manchester United right now, what are they? As you said, they're improving, mm. they're unpredictable. Mm. But they're a slowly awakening giant. And that's been the EPL this season. Yeah. An awakening, improving, unpredictable giant. So I, I find the similarities between yeah. the EPL season and Eric Ten Hag, you know, very similar. Okay, but what else has he done? Importantly, you won't like this. He's actually made Man U watchable again. Oh yeah. From a neutral standpoint, even if you like Man U, hate Man U. For the last three or four years, they haven't been much fun, apart from the pantomime aspects, yeah. you know, the, the farcical... The, the comedy, yeah, the un comedy. unintentional comedy part. Yeah. But it was like watching Mr. Bean endlessly. <laughs> There's only so many times you can watch Mr. Bean fall over. There's only so many times you can watch Man U fall over before it stops being funny. They've actually become watchable, genuinely entertaining at times. And then your point, just to add, yeah. the improvement of individual players... Oh. You mentioned Rashford there, but it, it's it's Luke Everybody, Shaw. Fred. Fred, it's one Basaka, yeah. it's Dalot. Yeah. Yes, I know the right back position is still needs addressing long term, but in the short term, yeah. Dalot and one Basaka have both improved. The De Gea is yeah. arguably back to his best. Back to his best. Very confident. The whole sp and then he brought in Casemiro. Yeah. So the whole spine of the team it's, it's has improved solely because of him. It is a title challenging team. That's all I would say. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, um, and it's not very often where we have both a good Man U side and a good Liverpool side. Yeah. Well, you're not good at the moment. Well, not, so no, it doesn't not matter. Good, but you know, if, if, if all things go well. <laughs> I mean, in the next few years, you might have two title challenging Man U and title challenging Liverpool. Mm. And you know we have such a strong, that strong fan bases here. It's gonna be fun, man. It will be fun. It yeah. will be fun for Singapore. That is true. Mm. It's gonna be Man U. I think it was more likely to be challenging in the next few years, we'll see. but we'll we see. shall see. But let yeah. us know what you think. Are Man U gonna be challenging for titles again? And is Eric Ten Hag the manager that defines this season? If not, who is yours? Let us know. Okay. All right. Let's let's wrap this up. We're moving forward now. Yep. Look look forward straight away. Okay. No, we, like I said earlier, we, we are in the final stretch. No more international breaks. Just straight EPL, 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 EPL matches all the way. Can Arsenal negotiate next this next month? They oh. got Liverpool coming up at Anfield. They got Man City coming up, top of the table clash, and they have an unpredictable Chelsea. You think? Do you think they can? This is such a hard answer oh. because I don't want to sit on the fence with Arsenal. I really don't. If it was Man City. Done deal. If it was Liverpool, done deal. Even Man U, done deal. But the thing about Arsenal is, yeah. and this is a credit to Arsenal, it's not a criticism, their entire team ethic, as you mentioned, their entire collective body is performing at a collective peak. All of their performances are usually seven or eight out of ten every week. Man City, as you saw last week, they can get away with five out of ten, six out mm. of ten performances and still win. Mm. Arsenal, Arsenal have to be Arsenal have to always over. Yes, they have to be their optimum almost every yep. week. And I just don't know if that's sustainable. I hope I'm wrong. Yeah. I really do. I, yeah. But they've got to be eight or nine out of ten every week to beat the teams you say in April. Yep. And I don't know. That's yep. just, I know that's a cop yeah, yeah. out. I, I don't know. Neither neither do I. I I, I think I do I, I do think they need to get a point at Anfield. They mm. need to get a point against Man City. Minimum. Minimum. And if they can do that, I think they have a shot at really sailing through to the title. What I will say, in fairness, throw, the, throw a bone to Arsenal fans, I do think Man City will drop more points. That's they were true. lucky to win against Palace. Mm -hmm. I think they'll drop more points. I think what would have been victories in the past will be draws. That'll be crucial. Mm -hmm. That arguably strengthens Arsenal's hand more than just about anything yeah. else. So, and they've got Jesus coming back, yep. which is no bad thing as well. Right. So are we going to make a decision? Or are we going to say, oh, I'll say, yes, you can do it, Arsenal. You I say, I say go on, prove us, prove us you can do Arsenal it. Arsenal Ballet, you can yeah. do it. You can do it, you can do it. Okay. What's so, next? Um, well, let's let's go for that relegation. I think relegation battles are, phew, so many, so many teams, including your team, going yeah. in, in the drop. I also don't know who's gonna win the who's gonna get relegated. Who do you think are the three most likely candidates? <sighs> All right, I'll do it. 
The three teams, I think, heart, head, whatever. Mm. The three teams I think that will get relegated are uh-huh. Leeds, Southampton, West Ham. Oh. I really do think that. And it's not my heart ruling my head, emotion. I see West Ham quite a lot for obvious reasons. This is a really profound what I'm going to say. Okay. They're actually quite crap. <laughs> Very I think profound. it's underestimated Very profound. how bad they have been. They have spent £160 million. They've got this forward, Skamaka, Skamacha, who never plays. <laughs> he never picks him. He puts Ings up front, who hasn't really delivered. Antonio, yeah, he's workmanlike, but he's workmanlike in the way a rocking horse <laughs> is workmanlike. They're not very good. Declan Rice has already checked out. He's already left the building psychologically. He's just counted down the oh. clock. You have to go with current momentum. Southampton got a decent draw against United. Okay, that may not be enough, but I think Bournemouth are improving uh, defensively. I think Everton will be fine with Dyche. I think Leeds will be close. So for me, Leeds, Southampton, there's always one so-called big club. I think it's yeah. the Hammers. Yeah, I think this year, like, big clubs are in danger. Like, One like, will go. Yeah. One f- will go. Fulham and Notts first. I think they are relatively safe already. Yeah, Palace, yeah, Bob- I think, will hang on. Bournemouth, I, I think Bournemouth might, might go for the drop. Mm. That's that's my pick. The other two is like, your, like you say, Southampton and Leeds. Mm. I would have hoped Everton, but no. <laughs> The only thing about Southampton... Sadly, sadly Liverpool fans are going to be disappointed again. <laughs> you think they'll stay up? The only I thing about Southampton, again, more, even more predictable, they've got this new manager coming in, Ruben Sellers, yeah. and he has improved them defensively. Uh, yeah, Whether it's a little too late, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, I think it's too late. So who's your three? So it's Southampton, Leeds and Bournemouth. Are you still going Bournemouth? Yeah, still going Bournemouth. I hope I'm wrong, uh, but yeah. let's see. What do you think? Our picks are Leeds, Southampton, West Ham, <laughs> Leeds, Southampton, Bournemouth... Let us know who is your pick yep. to be relegated. Send all of your predictions to Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube, Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter, and Yahoo SEA on TikTok. Brilliant. And we'll see you again when EPL resumes. And then that's it, man. It's final it's stretch. All the way, all, all the way, man. The way. Gonna, every week we're going to give you the best podcast, man. When West Ham will. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Come back and see. All we'll right. see you again very soon. Take care. Stay safe.